OK, well, thank you uh, very much uh, for coming along today. Um, it's been wonderful to finally have a... to start with our, our winter series, which last year was interrupted, I think, twice by lockdowns, which, of course, um, we are all... We were very familiar with. So really good to, um, to actually get one kicked off for a change. Just adjust this a little bit. Cool. Here we go. So today we're looking at some of the elements that we need to consider when it comes to our back backyard chicken coops. There's a lot of things that go into it, uh, a good setup. Um, there's a lot of myths, a lot of uh, misconceptions when it comes to backyard chicken coops and what is uh, what should be done and what should work well and uh, what you should do with your coop. What we like to do is just to really uh, utilise some of the experience that we've gained in the in the decade of, of running our business and also um, some of the things we've learned along the way, a lot of the feedback from customers, um, new products that have come online and, uh, and just work really well for backyard chickens. Uh, we also look very carefully at not just, you know, that's the style of coop, but what are some of the things that we can do to our coop, some of the alterations that we can make, um, or things that we can build into the coop, if you want to build your own coop, um, things that we can do that make life a lot easier, and save money and make things um, just that much more enjoyable when keeping chickens um, by having that, a really good coop set up. So I've got a couple of definitions to start with, uh, which is a chicken coop, for me, is lost it there, is the actual housing part. So we're looking at this back part here on the larger coop. Um, so that's the part that the chickens are in at night time. They're in there, they're nice and warm, they're safe, and they're dry. Um, it should only have one, I'm going to other bits now, but it should only have one door into that coop. Ideally, we don't want multiple doors, apart from maybe your external nest box access to it, which you wouldn't really consider a door, but just access to the nest box, but otherwise just the single door to allow chickens in and out. That door may be come with a little shutter, uh, or a little, literally a door that can be closed. You probably won't have to close it. You know, we don't really have very, very cold temperatures here. Zero degrees is nothing for a chicken. They all cuddle up together, as I say, and they're quite happy, so zero degrees is probably is okay. Um, but if it's particularly windy on your property, you might want to actually you know, close that door at night time, uh, just in the, in, in the depths of, of winter. The chicken run, now that is an enclosure. Now that's an all enveloping enclosure that covers the, the chicken coop. So a lot of chicken coops, you've got the two in one, you've got your little run here, and then you've got your, your coop at the back. Here we go, and we've got a large run, well, large run. Got our run, and we've got our coop. And we've got our little imported one. Now that's a, a very small coop, probably enough for a sort of couple of bantams maybe. Uh, we've been using that for our chicken, uh, our baby chicks, and it's been been good. And I'm going to talk about some of the limitations with different coops um, later on. So the chicken coop, the small housing part, chicken run, that large area for them to frolic and run around, uh, run around during the day. Those are those the two separate elements to a coop for me. So some of the legal responsibilities. Um, for council, the councils expect when you're looking at keeping backyard chickens and, and what they expect from your chicken coop is that it's 1.5 metres from any boundary. Um, that's important, that's fairly standard for most councils in Victoria. That 1.5, you need to make sure that it's clean and rodent free. Right? We don't want to be attracting rodents into that coop. Um, you don't want to create any sort of nuisance, any noise from smell, odours, um, or your chicken activity, any, any nuisance to your neighbours. So that's important. You, your chicken manure must not build up, build up and cause obviously track rodents and insects and things like that. So we don't want it building up, causing a bit of a stink and a, and a smell, which is quite important. Now I do have a chart. We've got a handout to give to you. Uh, four pages. I've just doubled it up on each page, uh, and it, it goes into a bit more detail on each of these areas. So yeah, you won't actually miss out on, any, on any, anything there. Um, and also you'll have a small chart for the Mornington Peninsula on how many chickens you can keep before you need to apply for a permit. And typically that's around five, yeah, typically, depending on the size of, of your property. So room for your flock. I say quarter of a square metre is ample for your chicken coop. So again, okay, that's just your housing part. And of course, because they're only there at night time, no, they're already sleeping, they're cuddling up to keep warm, um, laying their eggs. Uh, but otherwise, they really want to be out in the run. They want to be out in sort of the great outdoors, really. And that run does have that exposure to the sun. Um, yeah, plenty of fresh air for them. 
and they can get out. And it's just, it can be a smaller area, but they can they want to be out in their moats during daylight hours as a rule. So the coop can actually be relatively small. And quarter of a square metre is a reasonable size area. In the actual run area, though, we want about a uh, square metre of area. Again, it's erring on the high side. Locating your chicken coop. So, uh, firstly, we want a to always to position the coop in a well-drained area. We do not want water flowing through that coop. So you do need to think carefully about where you position your coop. A uh, nice high area, although you've got to think about exposure to the elements and, and wind. So it needs to be an area that obviously works for your backyard, but it's got to be well drained. Um, there's a few things we can do to ensure that, it's, um, you know, that it drains well. You may have to put it on a lower area, but you can put rocks of scoria there uh, to build up a little platform, and you can put the coop on there. So that's one way of just ensuring that any water that comes, comes near the coop is going to flow under it rather than uh, seep up and be, um, seep into the, uh, the wood shavings or the bedding material. Because damp for me is not a good thing with chickens. You want to keep it dry at all, at all times. On bases, uh, the base of the coop and run ideally would be concrete. Um, that's because, say rodents, um, foxes, good diggers, they can come up and under the floor. Uh, um, and to access your coops, if you have a concrete floor, you won't have that problem, obviously. That is certainly not a pos uh, always possible for a lot of people to have a concrete floor for their run in their coop. Uh, so that's when we'd use something like scoria or, or rocks. Uh, then we want to put a nice layer of tight aviary mesh, ideally, over, over that area for the entire, the entire area of your coop and your run. As long as you have your mesh down there, the aviary mesh, well, rodents and, and um, foxes, they, no matter where they dig, they won't be able to come up and into the coop. Inside the actual housing part of the coop, we want that to be completely dry, obviously, um, uh, draft free. It needs to be a nice, cosy environment for the chooks. Um, and uh, we don't want ammonia to build up either at night time. So some coops have a uh, droppings tray. Who, who has a droppings tray on their coop? At the moment. Okay, yeah, great, which is a great idea. Um, I like to have a layer of wood shavings on that droppings tray, about um, just whatever you can get in there, really. You've, you've got it limited, you can't just load it up, but you might be able to get sort of 10 millimetres, 15 millimetres of wood shavings in there. Okay, great. Pop that in there, and that way, when the dropping comes through, hits the shavings, the shavings then absorb the, start to absorb the moisture out of that, out of the dropping, out of that manure, and starts the composting process. So it's getting that started. Sand. Good question. Great. Yeah, so what about using sand in the chicken coop? That's a great question. Uh, something I thought about when I was putting this together. In America, it's often recommended. I think yeah, you can use sand. I don't like to use it, or rec we don't tend to recommend it, um, only because you've got to clean constantly with sand. The dropping goes into sand, it just sits there. So great, but you've got to rake it out. You've got to collect that, and then it's got sand mixed in with that dropping. You know, sand doesn't compost. So it's not, going to, it's not going to facilitate the composting process at all, and that's why I like wood shavings. So just on that. Yes, you, Jenny. How do you do the dust bath then? Yep. Because that's what someone said to me. Get one of those... Um, like a you know, tub or something. Like, yeah, 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 it's, it's like a... Sh things and put yep. sand in there. Yep. So. And put sand in there. So I would, I'd tend to... You could put a little bit of sand in there. I prefer something like uh, we use... Bugs away, put a bit of that, I'd have a third of that in a, in a uh, dust bath. I uh, would put a bit of dirt in there, uh, wood shavings and um, wood ash. I prefer wood ash because um, uh, wood ash uh, uh, desiccates or helps to desiccate the insect, which is what this does. And that means it's going it's to abrade and it's going to cut in and remove the, the, the exoskeleton of the insect and they, tend, they essentially evaporate. Underneath where they're sleeping at night, that's the place you have to clear it more often uh, because it tends to build up there. A third of the droppings are done at night time. So all in the one place, when they're all lined up on the perch, all cuddled up in the corner, which they often do as well. So the droppings are going to build up that relatively faster. And that's when I would tend to rake that the, the layer out of wood shavings into a larger, like the larger uh, run area, if you can because then they get a chance to break down. Compost means that all the pathogenic bacteria, um, all the nasties are burnt up in the composting process, which yeah, is a very healthy um, environment for birds to be on. Good insulation, they love it, they love to dig into it, um, and it works really, really well. We only need uh, one nest box 
throw up to seven chickens, right, which is often a surprise for a lot of, a lot of people. Uh, but, you know, they don't all lay at the same time, so we don't have that problem with, um, you know, triple-decker, you know, chickens all lining up on laying on each other, although I have seen it, I have to admit, I have seen it. Um, but they'll, they'll, they'll make it work, and they get up there and they lay on each other, they have to, but you won't have that in a small, a typical small backyard flock of up to sort of five, six, seven chooks in one nest box, no problem at all. We just want a nest box to be nice and warm, five-sided, ideally, um, most coops have two nest boxes, but um, a five-sided box is great uh, with the open side to have a 100 millimetre lip at the front uh, just to contain the, the bedding or the nesting material in there is really good. Um, and also we would, um, yeah, we ideally we want to hang a piece of canvas or an old T-shirt um, with a 50 millimetre gap at the, on the front, on the open face of that nest box. And it means that the hen, she pokes a little head through there and she says, oh, that's lovely and dark and cosy. It's got the, you know, it's got the hemp fibre for the nesting material, which say it's antibacterial, it's, um, which is the main reason we recommend for it to be used. It's got great antibacterial qualities um, and it's highly absorbent, much more than wood shavings. Absolutely no sleeping in a nest box. Hopefully that's not surprising to anyone. Although chickens love to sleep in nest boxes, they're quite happy. There's always a percentage that will sleep in the nest box, but it's a no-go zone for chooks because what's the reason why? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. They load it up. They load it up. They're, they're dropping sun at night time while they're sleeping. It's all happening where they're laying their eggs. So last thing you need. How do you stop them? Uh, normally a coaching session couple normally does it. Um, Stern words, uh, but no, what I do is I tend to barricade them. Basically, they, uh, at night time, they're looking for that sleeping spot. Uh, put a ball, any sort of bar bar barricade in there. They try and get in. Well, I can't get in there. Right, well, I'm going to have to get up into the corner with the other birds or get up on the perch, you know, because I can't get into my nest box to sleep at night. And the other thing is just to go out at night time, and if there's a chicken in there, you just push her out or you lift her up and you put her with the others and then she won't tend to move because she's, you know, she's really, she's dozy, she wants her to sleep. So that's another way of doing it. There's some persistent offenders, but most of the time they'll get with the program and they will stop sleep in that nest box. So the chicken run environment should be fully waterproof. Um, so this is into our, the, the, the safe um, run area, right? So one square metre per chicken. We want it to be fully waterproof. We want to have 200 millimetre eaves. Um, to provide a bit of weather protection. Uh, we do want to put, um, we want to have protection from the prevailing wind. So if you know where the prevailing wind is on your uh, property, uh, you might want a physical barrier to put your coop next to, uh, such as a fence, um, uh, a, another a shed, um, a tree maybe, something that's just going to sort of stop a bit of that driving rain from coming straight through the run area. Um, so dry is good, so yes, yeah, fully covered, fully meshed, and nice and dry. So location is very important, quite apart from actu actually we're going to locate it so that it's high in, in a well-drained area. Also think about that prevailing weather. You may have to add a permanent, you know, waterproof barrier, something like um, corrugated iron on the side, possibly two sh sides, like an hour shape on, on, your, on your run. Uh, again, just to stop that driving rain of all dampening the wood shavings, which then can't do their job, and absorbing the droppings and breaking down the compost. So you might have to do that. You can have a uh, more like a blind setup, and you have a blind that you can remove, that you can push down, um, and that will retract up too. And a blind can work quite well, uh, just to so when you know that the weather's coming, that you can provide that protection uh, from the elements. For your, for your chickens in the coop. But keeping it dry is important. I like a 200 millimetre skirting board right the way around. Uh, it stops scares too for your chickens. They can't sort of see over there. So cats, maybe more probably hear a dog, but some predators at night time, a fox is sneaking around, well, they can't really see the fox. Well, that's going to certainly help. But also it stops the migration of wood shavings outside of the coop because, of course, they love to dust bath, normally around the, in the perimeter, and then the wood shavings get thrown out of the coop. All services of the chicken coop to be covered ideally by aviary mesh. The whole run covered in mesh, ideally, like a mesh box, and that's just going to stop your rodents, <coughs> it's going to stop your wild birds from coming in and just keep life nice and easy, uh, simple. Uh, the more rodents, the more wild birds that are coming in, you're, you're getting more uh, chance for parasites, worms to build up, 
you know, viruses, all sorts of nasties. And uh, automated do door is something else for allowing your chickens. This is just one example of a, a full kit automated door. And there's also like, um, if you have it with your own door, you can have a door lifter and automates that. Allowing the chickens out from the run area into the great outdoors of the free ranging. Um, which is that sort of third area, and that's for me, that's the big area where chickens can get out and enjoy life. Um, a bit more exposure to risk, but that's when you can fence them to go off to the left. Uh, you won't let them out maybe in the winter in some of the you know, horrendous conditions. You're going to keep them in the run uh, and they'll be quite happy in a nice dry environment. But the wet, um, large areas, that's free ranging. That's the, when they're out there in the great outdoors. Uh, so locally made coops, uh, typically built using treated pine. Yeah, quite common. Uh, obviously a bit more expensive. Um, they last a bit longer. They've got better sort of um, equipment, latches and things like that. And it, yeah, imported coops, very soft wood. Um, a lot cheaper though, but quite inexpensive. Uh, but a lot of the time the, the mesh is just stay put on. Much, much easier for a fox to get into. So you've got to be quite vigilant when it comes to uh, owning one of the, the um, imported coops and relatively small. So when you order them online, when they show up, expect it to be about a fifth of the size that you've seen online. But you want to provide extra protection for an imported coop because they, they are easily attacked. They really can't handle the Australian environment very well at all. Finally, to the myths and misconceptions. So there's a few there, we've got a few, which I uh, say is all listed in your little handout. Our first is really, you need a dirt floor for the run so the hens can scratch around in that dirt. So, not, not really, no, I, I, they, they're happy scratching into, into sh wood shavings, turning it over. If it's just dirt, they'll dig into the dirt, of course, a dropping, if they do a dropping, which they're going to do, it's going to hit the dirt and just sit there. All right? And then, of course, next chickens come along, they walk through that dropping. If it's got salmonella, camp, camp in the back, if they've got any nasties in there that that bird happens to have, well, they efficiently distribute it amongst the flock because they said that dropping's not breaking down. It's taking a long time to break down because it's just sitting there on the dirt. Hay and straw, see that? They don't absorb droppings very well either. So again, the dropping kind of just rolls off it onto the dirt. So get, track a lot more smell, a lot more rodents, a lot more insect activity um, because the, the, the dropping's not breaking down like it needs to. Chicken runs don't need to be covered or waterproof. Again, okay, no, that for me, no, that's not true. No, and some, a lot of customers I'll have half of their run um, covered and the other half exposed. I was like, oh no, no, that's a no-no for me. Again, because then the rain comes down, the chickens are digging their holes and the dirt, of course, digging around there. You're limited with what materials you can put in there because you can't use wood shavings, you can't use anything absorbent because the rain's going to absorb the rain. And that's the, op you know, you want it to absorb the dropping, not the rain. And if it's absorbing rain, it can't do its job. So the chickens dig into the dirt, dig their little holes, the holes fill, fill with water, and of course the chickens drink from their water. They love, love drinking out of puddles, it's their favourite thing. All right, the favourite thing, they love it. And you can have a little drinker there and uh, they'll ignore that and go straight for the puddle. So they walk through the puddle, they walk, dro walk droppings through the puddle. Um, uh, so it just gets contaminated very, very easily. And finally a tree branch is uh, best to use as, as a perch for the coop. A lot of people I know they have uh, find an old branch and I think they're perfect in the chicken coop. Uh, it's again a big no-no for me. No, because um, basically the tree branch, well, they can start quite large and they can taper down to being quite thin at the other end. You get little nodules on there. You've got um, different diameters, different nodules, uh, little bends in the, in the tree branch, all nice and natural, which is wonderful. But it means that the, the, the pad for the chicken, you know, one's, you know, might have a little nodule in there that's pressing against an area of, of their foot. Um, and you get this uneven pressure applied at different areas, different angles, different heights where they're perching and that all can create leg issues and, and, and foot pad issues too. So we want uh, a more uniform perch, something that's nice and smooth, um, something quite a reasonable diameter, sort of 40, uh, 40 millimetres, 45 millimetres. A square with bevelled edges is ideal because they've got great big foot pads on them and that's what I want, they'll have those on them, a nice flat surface and then just cut, curl their little toes around the end and they're quite comfortable then sitting, uh, you know, perch, sleeping at night on that perch. Also mites, can also love living in, red mite loves living in uh, branches. So that's, they love, they live in the wood. They come out at night time to feed off chickens. So it's a nice, a very easy pathway straight from the perch, straight to the chicken. So we've got to be mindful of that, that as well.